Welcome back everybody, this is Tom with Charlie's Props and today we're going to announce our exciting new line of props that we're calling our practical props, so let's get to it. Alright everyone, so here we are, we're announcing our practical props, with Charlie's Props, now let's take a quick step back and say, what's not a practical prop? Well, to be honest, something like this down here, this is our infinity spinner, is 1,450 pixels of awesome. It is absolutely an awesome prop. And it's got some amazing sub models done by Showstopper. This Showstopper sequences. This is like a centerpiece, maybe have two of them to really mesmerize the crowd, but you're not gonna completely cover your house, otherwise you'll just do projection mapping or matrices everywhere. What is more practical are the props to my left and right here that are flashing. And we're gonna get into the simple sequencing uh, capabilities that these practical props have. Watch to the end of the video for video, uh, the end of this video to show for leveraging groups. And then we're gonna have a part two video that talks about state effects. That's right. So let's get showing some of these practical props that we're gonna be releasing. And then we'll talk about how they all correlate. Here's a cross, it's got some cool sunshine rays that go on with it, makes it look kind of like it's like flowing in or out of the cross, it's awesome. We've got this pretty basic spinner, it's very similar to our peppermint spinner that is in a similar size, but it's 200 or 250 pixels. This is down to 100 pixels. This here is a holly with three berries, it's got three holly leaves, it's 100 pixels. You might be getting a theme here. And here is a dove carrying a holly sprig, very festive. Now we've got another similar ornament, very similar in size and look. Here's an ornament that is a cross with 100 pixels. We have another ornament, again, same size with the Bethlehem star. Here's another ornament, same size again, 100 pixels again with another star. And then we've got another ornament here with a tree in the middle of it. We also have another one that we've designed, haven't cut it yet, but we know it'll work. It's a uh, ornament just like this that has like a five petal flower in the middle of it. Now you might be thinking, why did we do so many ornaments? Well, just think, kind of like RBLs, what if you threw a whole bunch of these along a roof line? Or what if you wanted to put a bunch of these into like a tree, a natural tree that you have? Uh, these are really easy to use, they're all similar size, but it's kind of like you get that box of globes from the store, and they all have slightly different like hand-painted designs on them. That's sort of the idea here. And speaking of hand-painting, this has simply been scuffed up, spray-painted red, and my wife spent about five or ten minutes on each of these just doing some hand-painting of the snowflakes up here. It looks pretty cool. doesn't take much to really jazz these up, but here's the trick with all of these. These are all 100 pixels, so they only take 100 pixels per prop. None of them require any kind of splicing and all of them have a really good, easy to use sub model. So let's get into X-Lights and check them out. All right, everybody, so here we are looking at X-Lights. We're looking at our generic display that we use for some of the sequences that we have on our website for free. And what I've done is I've added in five of the ornaments here as part of, let's say, that it's hanging from the garage roof line. And if you notice, I've got some RBLs here, the way that, at least in my personal show, the RBLs are part of the roof line makes it really easy to sequence them. I rarely use them independently. You always can, but it makes it really easy if they're part of the roof line. And we'll get to that in just a minute. And I've also thrown six together here in the configuration imagery. Now, none of these are really to scale. This would be much larger, being about 20 inches a piece. They're probably, you know, three stacked high would probably be 50 to 60 inches tall like this. So it's not meant to be uh, to scale. But anyways, so here's how you can leverage adding props last minute is knowing your groups, knowing the groups that most sequencers use like arch groups, snowflake groups, star groups, roof lines, um, and roof lines might be called uprights, uh, verticals, uh, horizontals, uh, house outlines, it could, it could be any of those. But if you have props with multiple submodels, what you can do is leverage them instead of just saying, I'm going to put this entire prop in this group, you can say, I can put this submodel in this group, and I can put this submodel in this group. So I'm going to go over this real quick here. So all I've done is added these in, and then I've added them into the different groups here. And I've, I've got a sequence up to show you. So we've got the all, these aren't arches, so they're not in the arches. We're going to run through these real quick. 
And so the house outline, now you'll notice here for the outlines, I did just the circles of the ornaments. I didn't do it on the trees of the ones hanging from the garage. That's because if there's a different effect on that than something else, that would be affected separately. So if I just do a render all of all my sequences, now I've got these different layers of the same prop interacting with different groups. And so it makes it really easy to add some of these props in very, very last minute. You may not get, um, may not get a full um, usage of, of what the prop is capable of, but if you know, you're in middle of November and you want to add these some new props to your, to your display, whether they're from us or not, um, this is how you can really get them added in really quickly. So we're going to keep running through here. And so no face, all lights, they're all included, just the, the no face, uh, house all you can see here that we've included them all uh, for the roof lines all again you can see that we've used the outlines because we've sort of in our minds defined that those circles are part of the the roof lines and then for snowflakes you might notice that some of these are filled in some of them aren't i decided well i've got a star group so i'm not going to put the bethlehem star or the stars here in those and again it's all about leveraging the existing groups uh, best that you can so they're not part of the snowflake arches or the gables snowflakes house you can see that we've added some some in here yeah we added the stars here again just trying to leverage different things where different effects might hit and then again in spinners all and it's hard to see if i were to zoom in this actually has slightly different sub models selected on some of these and that's again they're going to react a little bit different using some of those different sub models and all of our sub models are really built for single line um, this the single line effect to, to be effective rather than having to worry always worry about which render method you're going to use so it's not spinner arches uh, spinners on the house again you can see here and if you notice and you're watching some of these other props it's also I, I also use this method in some of the bigger props as well but it can also apply to the smaller props again if we zoom in here you see slightly different things being selected again just trying to leverage the groups with the different sub models to try to hit slightly different effects without having to individually look at every single prop um, so again now that we're looking at all, all the stars we can see that the stars are lit up tree groups now I don't always use a tree group but when I do now I've created this little ornament tree here and I've added it to the tree group and what I did is I created a group of the tree ornaments and called it tree ornaments and then I added that group to the tree group now normally you don't put groups in groups because it may not render the way that you want but in this instance I want it to render as a group of these ornaments rather than individually so here we can see the tree ornaments and then uprights, whole house, and then not in the windows. So again, leveraging the groups that you know that you have and that get utilized a lot, whether it's creating your own sequences, importing, or a combination of them. So now looking at the sequencer here, I'm going to scroll down and, and I've, I've just added these, all of these ornaments at the bottom here. And so what I'm going to show you here is in this sequence is fully zoomed out. I just zoomed in and out of all of those you can see that we haven't applied any effects to any of these and so if i come through here and i play this and we look at this we can immediately see that a lot of these are being impacted by different effects right away now we might notice okay do we want to make a change do we want to implement different ways and notice again different things are being impacted by different groups and that's okay and so the, the next question we have is, do we want to add more in or is this good enough? This is good enough. Great. Load it in, you know, do a batch render, load it in and um, run it. But the other thing that I like to do sometimes is, okay, I want a little more impact. And I know that some of these little um, sub models within the ornaments, I know that they work really well with single lines and what, what props have generally a lot of single line usage and it's either arches or roof lines so i'm going to look at this and i can see yep there are a bunch of single lines here on the arches and if i wanted to well the house outline has some some different stuff so i'm actually just going to go row copy copy effects i'm going to go down here i'm not going to paste it onto the the prop itself i'm going to make it just slightly more interesting so i'm going to expand each of these and i'm just going to pick a random um 
submodel on each of these. So let's find the ornament snowflake and then let's put it on, I don't know, let's put it on the diamonds big, row paste effects. And then on the star, let's put it on the star, row paste effects. And then on the ornament tree here, let's put it on the tree. And did I miss any? I feel like I did. There it is. And let's put it on the uh, let's put it on the start. Why not? And Just double checking here. So we got something on all of them. Okay, there we go. So now when I click on one of these effects in the preview, now it's completely changed. You can see that they're, they're all bouncing around. They're all looking pretty darn good. And all I did was take a single strand, a, a row of that is heavily influenced by single strand effects. And all I've done is copy and paste it into some of these sub models. I wasn't overly picky or choosy. And yeah, could we go in here and make some changes? We probably could, but you know what? For spending the last couple minutes just grouping these together and then rendering and then just copy pasting one row of effects, it gets it has a pretty darn big impact on your show. It doesn't take a whole lot of time. So sometimes when you hear me say that, yeah, you can add props in last minute and have them look good, look great. Um, this is exactly how I do it. I leverage the groups and then I find single strand effects that will work well on a single on, on a sub model that will work well with single strands and I just let it run. I hope this all helps and have a great one.